Hi there, I'm Terry Suresh with The Wellness Curve. I am a nurse practitioner and CEO of Hormonal Health, Wellness, and Skin Centers here in the DFW Metroplex. One of my biggest passions is sharing any kind of education with my audience, whether it's live, on television, in print, uh, ways that we can be healthy. And that's not just healthy physical health, that's mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, and relationship health. Relationship health is key. So today, my guest, that is her big genre is relationship health. Andrea Jones is the relationship coach. I've known Andrea for a couple of years now, and she has been an amazing gift to my life and to my patient's life. What we find is I balance hormones and I get people feeling healthy on one side, um, but they still have a lot of unhealthy communication styles with their partners, whether that's at home, their family, their business partners, their spouses, whatever that is. So I brought Andrea here to share a little bit about herself and about what she does and how it can help you in your relationship health. So welcome, Andrea. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your expertise. I've enjoyed so much um, just watching you uh, blossom into this role of, of the relationship coach. And some people call you the modern day Dr. Ruth because you speak to intimacy and relationships and gender communication. But before we get into all that, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, as you can tell, I have an accent. I'm originally from Germany. I moved to the States uh, 12 and a half years ago. And uh, I'm a mother of eight. I gave birth to four. I have uh, twins in there too. And then I'm the mother, stepmother to four more kids. I have eight kids. Wow. It's like and the I'm Brady Bunch at your house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. We have three boys at the age of eight. So I'm um, wow. very busy. And uh, I'm also happily married. So uh, I have it all. That's awesome. Well, tell me a little bit. I know when you lived in Germany, you worked mostly in the male dominated field. So mm -hmm. that has a lot to do with where you are today. But let's talk about your time in Germany and how did you, how did this evolve to come into teaching people gender communication? Yeah, I think everything happens for a reason and it made a full circle. When I, when I finished high, sc high school, I, uh, I wanted to go uh, to college. College is a little different over there. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go to college. And in Europe, it's common to go and uh, do an apprenticeship. That's what it's called. Um, at a company where you work and, and study at the same wow. time. So I did that, and while I was there, they, they uh, voted me into an executive leadership program with that bank, and I found out later I was the only woman that has ever been um, elected into wow. that program. So that was the first um, new thing for me to be the only woman. So that was a cue to you that maybe you're doing something different that other women did. Other weren't? women did, yes. Ah, okay. I thought maybe I'm more determined than others, have a, a more set, set goal than others, but that was the beginning. When I finished with that program in college, then I worked for a professional basketball team, and I became the business manager for a male professional basketball okay, team. Okay, now talk about that, because that's pretty impressive. I don't know. How, are there very many female business managers for professional teams, or how does Ag that work? Again, I didn't know. I, just, I, I was asked to take over that position, and, and I w always loved sports. I did professional sports myself when I was younger. So I thought, well, I'll just give it a try, and I did. And then again, I found out later that I was the first woman in, in an, the entire Europe that was the business manager wow. for a professional basketball team. So. so you found all this after the fact it wasn't very intimidating because you were no, already just, in the I role just, and you felt comfortable. Yeah. Well, how was that? What did you do? I mean, I, I not necessarily get into what does a business manager do, but how did your interaction with the players and the men on the team and, you know, how was that and how did that develop to what you're doing today? Well, I think what I, what I never did is I never gave up being a woman. And that made a big difference because I didn't try to become a man in this man's world with other men. I always stayed close to be uh, true to myself to be a woman. So I brought female qualities to that basketball team. And years later, when I left the basketball team, they still said, I wish you were here or they, we wish you were here because the female touch to this entire very professional sports world was kind of gone when I left just because of the female qualities. Well, what, like an example, you know, I, I know you're not talking about bringing flowers into, no, the, you know. No, no, you know, so. it's just we, we, as women, we care more about others. And you can be in professional sports and corporate America, but you can still um, be care about others and show that care. And I was very involved not only with the player, but I was also very involved with the family of the player. Ah. The player was happy. It, it, that's great, but if the wife who came from another country maybe didn't speak the language, wasn't happy, the player was not happy. So I made sure the family is happy, the, the wife is happy. One time I remember I had to go to back then Serbia. There was a war in mm -hmm. Serbia. One of the players, his fiance, was in Serbia and they wouldn't give her a visa. So I traveled by myself, had to fly to another country, cross the border 
by, by foot to go wow. over there to the German embassy in Serbia to get that player's fiancé out of there. So that's not a normal, normal thing to do for a business manager. Right. However, we knew that was a key player on our team. And without his fiancé there, he would have not played as well. That's so up to this amazing. day, they're still thankful and everything else. So that's just diff different things that you wouldn't think about. They are necessary. But that team, we were a, very, a team with a very small budget, but we were hugely successful. And I contribute that to just being different, making different decisions. You're making different decisions. And How well were you received in the beginning when you got into this role? It was funny because in, in, we had a team in Italy, or teams in Italy that we played with. And you might know Andrea, my mm -hmm. name, is a, in Italy a male name. Correct. So when I sent, uh, back then we sent faxes, or the while back, uh, <laughs> we sent faxes to Italy and made arrangements for other teams coming. I signed with my name, and then I said Andrea, and then they always wrote back, Dear Sir. Ah. But I was a female. So, so when it they then worked to your favor till yeah. they then when they met me at the airport, they're always shocked and said, Where's Andrea? It's like that's me and they're always shocked that a woman would have that. So that once you got past that initial shock, they you were well received yes. and they, you know, didn't really have much no. issue. Um, and the players received you well yes. as well. Yes. What about coaches and some of the other did did you ever have any budding heads? Not, Everybody was no, not really, because it's just it's just I Is that something I would expect in the States and not so much in Europe, maybe? I don't know. No, it's just I think because I stayed through, I, I stayed a woman. I didn't try to become a man, compete with them on a male level. I was a woman in a man's world, but I didn't become a man. And staying a woman is one of the key things that Andrea really points to in her education. Um, it's a really important concept, and what does that mean? It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, flowers and frilly, et cetera, et cetera. It means a lot more than that. So stick around with me, and we'll find out a little bit more about what Andrea does and what staying a woman means. We'll be right back. I'm Terry Suresh. Welcome back to the Wellness Curve. I'm here with my guest, Andrea Jones. She is the relationship coach, and she has coined this amazing term called Menglish. How do you understand it? What does that mean? And we'll get to that a little bit later. When I left you before, we were talking about what does it mean to stay a woman and stay feminine and be feminine in, in a man's world? And how can you keep your effort, happily ever after, find your happily ever after? That's kind of what we're going to cover in this segment. So um, mm -hmm. what makes you and your approach to happily ever after so unique well I think the, the biggest the biggest difference to to me and other uh, women or men in this area is first of all I live the life that I want to help others to get so I am married and I raise kids um, you have to be in that situation to be able to do that it's great if you get out of college and you're young and you want to teach right. that however life is different when you have kids I have twins too so I talk a lot to mothers of twins I've been there done that so that's one difference the other difference, I think, is because I grew up in a different culture, right. and I look, to look at things a different way. Um, for example, here in the States, um, when I moved here, Europeans always think Americans are far ahead in everything, whether it's fashion, movies, in everything. And I was kind of shocked when I came here that when it, com when it, comes, to, no, <laughs> when it comes to relationships, we're like totally backwards. Right. Yeah, I mean, in relationships, intimacy and being close with each other, that is something that is so not talked about. And, and kids in school don't have any education early on. Where I remember when I went to school in Europe, we start that education in elementary school. Of Relationship course. communicating, <coughs> those kinds of things? Yeah, and in sexual education also early on. Right. We have that in, in elementary school. In elementary school, of course, age appropriate, but it's not a topic that is totally Taboo. taboo right you talk about it it's normal to to see and hear things and then when you grow up you have a more clear expectation right what's going on and that's not the case here in the states i found it's very different so when you're part of your unique style of teaching it is number one you've lived it mm -hmm. you you understand it it's like you said you can't you know come out of college and decide you want to teach gender communication and relationship you've got a lot of background yes. obviously life experience mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing is your cultural differences and i know you speak to i've heard you speak um, you do corporate keynote speeches and all kinds of speaking um, and it's awesome uh, but I've heard you speak to cultural differ differences, mm -hmm. and I don't know, maybe you're going to get into that a little bit later, but I've heard you speak to there's cultural differences between men and women, too, mm -hmm. and does that play some sort of role in this whole 
happily ever after? Yes. I mean, when you look at me being from Europe and, and, and you being from the States, you do things that are totally normal to you that are not normal to me. For example, Americans ask, how are you? Right. But we, you don't really <laughs> care how I am. So This is so funny because ever since you've told me that, I really pay attention when I ask someone, how are you? Mm -hmm. I want to really say it with sincerity. Which this is, is funny, but I'm sorry to interrupt. Keep saying, yeah, you so really don't care. No, you really don't care. <laughs> so when I came to the States, the first time I ever came to the States, and I was in a shoe store, and the lady said, how are you? She's like, she's so nice. Right. And when I tried to answer, she was already gone. Right. So she really didn't care. Right. And that's a, but it's a common thing to do in the States. However, for me as a European, if you ask me, and then you do not care, that's worse than not asking. Uh, so you do something that's very typical for you in your culture, and everybody in your culture accepts and, and doesn't expect an answer or doesn't expect uh, to, to stand there for 20 minutes. In my culture, that's not normal. And when it comes to men and women, it's the same thing. We grow up in our gender. We grow up a lot up, and expectations are set early on. I mean, look at a nursery. When you're expecting right. a baby, you're already planning what kind of uh, uh, colors you put in nursery, right. what kind of clothes you're going to buy. So early on, there are expectations linked to a gender, and then you behave not to fall out of line, and then later on, when you have, when you have a man in your life, you still expect to behave that certain way because you're taught that way, and then the, the cultures clash. And then what happens? Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you grow up um, with male or female expectations, and then the hormones kick in. You're the expert on the right. hormones. The hormones <laughs> kick in, and then you start chasing each other, and you have no idea what you signed up for. Right. Then they uh, don't act the way it's you want. It's kind of like the dog that uh, catches the bus and doesn't know then what yeah. to do with it. You know, <laughs> what do I do with this bus now? Yeah. Well, what's your opinion? Um, the biggest mistake in relationships between men and women. What with these cultural differences, we're clearly sometimes not communicating very mm -hmm. well. So, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see women make? Really, let's talk about women. We're talking about staying in our femininity. Uh, yeah. Well, the biggest one of the biggest mistakes is that we expect the man to be a woman. There was this term called hairy women. We expect men to be hairy women, which means we want them to act and think and behave like a woman would. And they're not going to behave like that. And then we treat them like misbehaving kids. So he's not acting the way a woman would or my child would when I tell my child to do something. So I treat them as if they're misbehaving. And then we get frustrated, irritated. Right. And that leads to then, to then a gap in, in your relationship. And then they get frustrated and <coughs> irritated in yes. the communication gap. Do you see that starting? Young, yes. like, um, do we tend to do that to our young boys, our sons? Yes, yes, right. and, and, and I wish I could talk to the entire youth in the nation and, and teach them. I was at my, my oldest is in high school, and I was sitting at lunch uh, the other day, and there was a boy sitting at our table, and he said, girls are so stupid. And I said, no, they're not so stupid, they're just so different mm -hmm. than what you do with your guys, and that's the problem, right? You don't understand them, and because you don't understand them, that's why you think they're stupid. They're and not stupid, just different. And just different, and the same thing as a mother raising a son, yes. not treating them like a little girl yes. is obviously very important, yes. and you see that yes. often, um, boys being, you know, demasculinized. And especially if you had a girl, I had girls first, and then I had the boys, and there's a big difference in what you tell them how to raise them, and if you make the mistake in trying to push them in that direction, then you're going to get frustrated with the boys faster than with the girls. And it causes problems from mm -hmm. the start. So, um, well, can you give us a common example uh, of a misunderstanding between men and women? Well, a common one that, that's, that's funny is... Um, Just really briefly, actually, let's, let's hold that, because I know we're going to go a little further on that one. That's a big question. So when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more about miscommunication and misunderstanding between men and women. Stay with us. Hi, welcome back. I'm Terry Suresh. This is The Wellness Curve, and I'm here with the relationship coach and Menglish expert, Andrea Jones. Uh, we were just getting into starting to talk about the differences between uh, communication and common examples of misunderstandings between men and women and maybe ways that, as, as women, we can... Now, I know you and your husband speak together, and he kind of speaks to the men on how to communicate well with women, but as women, how can we maybe some of avoid some of those common mistakes and miscommunications. Well, I can give you, you asked me for an example. So yep. an example for, is um, we women are taught early on not to be high maintenance. 
We say, don't be high maintenance, which okay. we translate into being okay with everything that's going on. And, right. and we do this now, it's still up to date. So for example, your husband or partner asks you, where do you want to go out to dinner? And then you will taught to say, I don't care. So while he's driving, we're praying that he's going to take us to the restaurant <laughs> to where we, we want to go to. And then we make little hints like, oh, did you know that our Italian place has a patio now? And he just says, yes, and he keeps on driving. And then we end up at a whatever, Chinese place or somewhere we didn't want to go eat. And then we sit there pouting the whole night. And he didn't know what he did wrong because so true. he did ask us, but we said we don't care. So there's, there's one example where we think high maintenance ma means to, to go with the flow, which you start and as a teenager. And don't ask for what you want. Don't ask for what you want. While men, on the other hand, consider women high maintenance, women who don't know what they want, women who are never satisfied. They consider a woman like that high maintenance. So the man would much rather, when he says, what do you want to do, you tell him, I want to go to the Italian restaurant no, and sit on the no, patio. Okay. No, no, you, you <laughs> still, help me out here. <laughs> he still, you, you, the man still wants to win with you, and he wants to be the man. So give him two options. Say, I either like to go to the Italian place or I like to go to the sushi place. Ah. So, and both are okay with you. Either one is right. fine with you. Let him make the decision. Let him be the man and make the final decision. Don't tell him, I want to go there. They don't like that either. They don't like that either. But give him two options. And then don't sit there pardon. Because a lot of women, this is, this is a big mistake. That's a, great, that's a great example. Um, we need some more. <laughs> <laughs> give us some more miscommunication or things that you see uh, commonly that, you know, women do that they probably shouldn't or ask a different way. I know I've called you privately several times ago. <laughs> okay, I have this situation. Uh, how do I present this to get the result that I want? And it sounds manipulative, but it's but really it's not. not. No, it, it's just, it's just uh, taking care of his needs, too. Because we women tend to fulfill our own needs and then think we're doing a good job, and we're not. Another prime example is Valentine's Day is, is coming up. And Valentine's Day is the worst holiday for, for any man out there because the only thing he can do he is never fail. Wins. No, no, he never wins. He always fails. Because right. whatever he does, we make sure he finds out that somebody else did something better. Oh. So if the flowers are not there by 10, we start texting, do you know what today is? And then he knew, he sent it. And then even if he gives, sends us a big bouquet of flowers, we still make the little remark later, oh, my friend, did you know she, she received two dozen roses and she got candy and a teddy bear? So for him, it's again, I didn't do as well as I should have done. And then now, do we do that? purposeful? Are we trying to be no. ugly about mm -hmm. it or is there, are we just sharing information exactly. because we like to talk? Yeah, I want to get it exactly. It's for us it's not to, to, to point out to him because we're happy with the flowers he gave us. However, certain things we say, we talk just to talk as women. We can go from this topic to that topic, <laughs> hit, hit 15 topics in between just to share information. If I like you, I share information with you. Right. Men don't do that. So when we make, share a story of a friend who received those extra flowers, he thinks we're telling him that for a reason, ah. and we're not. So we got to be careful what we mention to him. Is it really important for him to know that? Is there a point behind that? If not, then just don't say it. Call your girlfriend and tell your girlfriend. And talk about the and other person the other. that got yes. the roses and yes. you didn't get it. That makes total sense. Or is everything? Is this sounding, you know, like good information to have? Because I know it is for me. I think as women, we don't always intend to, and we don't. We're not trying to hurt the people that we love, but it kind of can come across that way. We do. Yes. Um, you're also giving some seminars and workshops and keynotes in corporate America on this topic, Menglish, mm -hmm. gender communication. So let's talk a little bit about that. We've kind of been talking about it, but specifically. Let's get there. Well, the same mistakes we make in our private relationships we make in corporate America. And in a, lot of, a lot of corporations now have a lot of women. Over 50% of, of college degrees are now in, in the hands of women. So a lot of women come into companies, and, and a lot of companies are used to, used to be male-dominated all of a sudden. Engineers, for example, used to be a mostly male-dominated area. Now we have tons of female engineers. So they enter those companies, but there's a male culture in that company. So two things can happen. She can feel she has to act like a man to fit in. But trust me, the men don't like the woman acting mm -hmm. like a man, so she's going to get rejected. Or she like, makes a lot of mistakes in interacting with those men, which disqualify her too. But on the other hand, the companies need to be careful right. because if you don't have enough men, you know, not enough females in high positions, you're considered conservative. And studies show, there was a McKinsey study that even showed that companies that have a lot of women in leadership positions outperform companies that do not have a high female uh, representation. So when you come into some of those corporations and you're trying to help these females in these new roles, wh what angle do you go about? What are you teaching them? 
I mean, anything from, from, from how to act, how to behave, what to say, what not to say. There's, I mean, there's a lot of different angles, and, and women have to be aware that they are not in their own culture. But and again, ah, it's again, that culture thing. it's that culture thing, but they have to be careful because if there are women there too, they cannot act towards the women as if they are in male culture because then there's a disconnect there. So it's just like this little walk, uh, dangerous walk there. But right. if you have a basic understanding, it makes it so much easier not to say or do the wrong thing in corporate. That makes total sense. And so, you know, what we're talking about here is not, you know, I, I know there's a lot of women that are strong women out there going, well, I shouldn't have to change the way I talk and communicate and all those kinds of things. That's not the case. Um, we're trying to discuss how to be successful in those communication styles and those relationships so everyone's happy. Uh, so stick around with us. We're going to talk a little bit more when we get back with Andrea, uh, more about some of the keynotes and, and speeches and things that she does and things that she's teaching as well in, um, in private relationships and in the intimacy genre, not just business. So stay with us. There's a lot more to come. Hi, I'm Terry Suresh. Welcome back to the Wellness Curve. I'm here with relationship coach and Menglish expert Andrea Jones. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the workplace and how women can um, understand and learn this this culture difference, this Menglish in the workplace to create harmony in the workplace. And let's get a little bit back into that topic and just wrap that up a little bit um, because you know I. I've finished a thought when you were speaking because sometimes I think a lot of women can take what we're saying as, you know, we're going backwards to the 50s in the states where we were just waiting on men hand and foot. And that's not what you're teaching at all. So mm -hmm. let's just make sure that's all very, very clear. Yeah. The state is a, is a country which is wonderful when it comes to equal opportunity. We have the equal, equal rights and we should have equal rights. So I'm not taking anything away from that, that women can vote and have those positions. Not at all. However, we're not the same. We have, we have equal rights, but we're not the same. And if you forget about those differences we have, that's when the problems start. So a woman can be powerful and successful and should be, but don't give up who you are as a woman. Because and you're not true to yourself, that's, that's very stressful. You find a lot of women in high, high, uh, corporate in, in co high positions in corporate America having heart attacks and everything else because they're really so stressed all day because they're not true to themselves. So be true to yourself and use your female qualities and bring them to the table and, and not deny when them. You, when you say female qualities, let's differentiate that and make sure everyone understands we're not talking about manipulation mm -hmm. and you know those no. kinds of not female qualities. No, no, we're not talking about having low-cut dresses on to get yourself up. No, we're not right. talking about that at all. Just being aware of how you communicate with men and women different and having those qualities. We're very caring when it comes to each other. Women care for each other. We ask questions, for example. We talked about the how are you. Mm -hmm. So we do that with other women. Your hair looks nice. How is your child? Things like that. There's a lot of communication there that men don't, don't, don't do. If you understand as a man that women do that, you don't ask the question or think she's wasting her time. I have this example in a, a CEO of a big company, one of his, his uh, executive leaders was female and he told me I wish she would talk less she's so successful <laughs> she came into this company she turned it around she's so successful but she talks a lot to the other women if she cut that talk in short and would do more business we'd be even more successful and I right. told him no because if she doesn't talk to the other women anymore they're not gonna like her right yeah women feel connected to each other when we when we talk to each other so as a woman I have to understand that I need to talk to the other women more but don't share all that information with a man, with the man because then he might think I'm scatterbrained. I'm all over the place right. and I'm just sharing so information. So the men want just to the point, the facts, cut to the chase, give me the information. We don't want to talk over talk it and chit chatty um, because they stop listening. Correct? Yeah, and it's, not a, it's, and it's not all men. You have to be careful because it's not a cliche that every man is like okay. this and every woman is like this. But when you are aware where the majority of men, we're talking about the bell curve. Sure. The majority, there are always exceptions to the rule. Um, and when you understand those, the, those rules that they go by, it's a lot easier to adapt yourself and act in a certain way. And again, not to, be man, uh, to, to manipulate anybody else, just to be aware when you talk to a man, give him the point first and then give him a little bit more. If he wants more, he's going to ask you. 
but don't start with the whole process. Right. And he's, you go all over the place. With a woman, I need that. As a woman, I want right. to understand. Another example is, as a woman, we tend to ask the question, why? Why don't mm -hmm. ask that with a man? Because the man thinks I'm questioning the end result. And as a woman, I just want to understand the process. the process. So you have to be, certain things are just a little different. And if you understand them, though, it makes a big difference. So when you speak to um, don't, w when a woman is in a, in a man's world, um, don't become like a man, that doesn't work. What do you mean by that? Well, it's, it's funny that other countries have shown the United States how it's done. Look at countries that, co that are considered very macho, like Brazil. They have right. a female president. Right. Germany has had a, a chancellor. We don't have a president. We have a president, but not in that same, with the same um, uh, authorities. Our chancellor has been a, a woman for years. So are those strong women? Yes, of course, they're very strong women, but they don't try to become a man. They, they use their qualities to get into those positions. So don't try to copy a man in your leadership style. And um, if we can get them to work together, men and women, with their qualities that they bring to, to the table, then you outperform other companies. And that's what you focus on when yes. you're doing your speaking. Um, just really quickly going back to home and, mm -hmm. and personal relationships, um, tie in a little bit, let's wrap this up and tie a little bow around. Um, some of those similar concepts at home when the man comes home from work and we want to chit chat and he doesn't and what does that mean and all of that you know we take it very personally exactly because we want we, we build relationships through communication communication is, is our, our key to build uh, like I said earlier to build a relationship if I like you I'm gonna talk to you so when the husband comes home from work and you ask him how was your day and he answers great and then you ask him another question, so how was that meeting? Good. And what did you do? Nothing. So those three short answers give us the signal he is mad at us, he's irritated, he's angry. While on the other hand, he, th after the first question, says, I told her how my day was. Why is she asking me any more questions? Why is she <laughs> interrogating me with a light on me, asking me all those right. things? And men, because they are very uh, focused on one thing, they're very single focused, and they think in compartments, he might still be in his work mode. So when he come, he's in work mode, then he's in drive mode, and then he's in home mode. So give him some time to transition. A lot of men disappear in a bathroom or in the garage or in the fitness studio and work out just to get out of work mode to be then in private mode. Give him that time and then also share with him, I need to feel connected to you. Can you share a little bit more? If a man understands that, that you need that to feel connected, he will share with you. But given him that time first. Given him that time now, after he comes home. obviously you do some coaching personal with mm -hmm. relationships and in corporations with mm -hmm. relationships. Can you just tell us really quickly how people can get in contact with you? Um, how do we set things up if we want to talk to you, workshops, those kinds of things? Yeah, we, the, the number is on the screen. Um, just, you can call us or you can, can send us a message through the, through, um, through the website. And then contact us and tell us what you're interested in. We coach individuals, like you said, right. from the mom to the corporate executive, anywhere in between, mom who has problems with the kids or in a, in a relationship or in corporate America. And then we do a lot of uh, speaking and corporate seminars so companies can reach out to us there too. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming. I always learn so much from you, even in the short amount of time we've had. Um, wonderful. Reach out to Andrea. She's amazing. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day.